Welcome to the sixth episode on the series of CDP4 videos. Today I'm going to show you how to track the values of a parameter over time. So, first thing that we have to do is connect to a server, uh, then open a model. So we're going to open the model that we've been working with all this time. I'm going to represent the system engineering domain of expertise. I'm going to open the element definitions. And I'm also going to open up the dashboard. So what you can do with the dashboard is you can visualize how a value of a parameter changes over time. And this can actually help the team to uh, converge to a solution. So um, imagine that uh, we want to know what the total mass is of the satellite, which is always nice to uh, keep track of because you want to at least make sure that it fits on the launcher and that you will get it into the right orbit. <clears throat> um, and in order to make sure that it doesn't keep on going up and up and up while you progress in your design, but that at one point it stabilizes, you can see, uh, you can track it with the, uh, with the dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this mass parameter to the dashboard. So I'm going to drag and drop it um, on the dashboard. I'm going to uh, uh, give this uh, little widget a name. And then it sort of shows me that the total mass is zero kilograms, which of course we already knew. One of the things here you see is that today CDP4 doesn't know how much it changed from the previous uh, value that it had, which of course makes sense because today it has the default value. Now, without going through a whole exercise on, how in, on showing you how the total mass is computed, I'm just going to put in uh, some numbers myself uh, based on the amount of batteries that I have, which is two. And remember, they ha each had a mass of five kilogram and reaction wheel, which each has a mass of uh, six kilogram. So four times six, 24 plus uh, 10 sounds like 34 to me. So I'm going to put in a manual value of 34. Remember, before this actually becomes available, I have to publish it, what we saw in the last video. So I'm going to do that as well. And now you see that also this has now changed to 34. So what you can see now is that um, before we were at zero, see, zero, and now we are at one. And at the bottom, you can see all the revisions. And here you can see the uh, values on the kilogram scale. Um, the revisions show you uh, how many changes have been made on the total data set. And here you see that at this revision, we changed it from zero to uh, 34. So now I'm going to um, make some changes. I'm going to say that my uh, battery now has a mass of six. And my reaction wheel has a mass of 10. So now I have to do some arithmetic uh, again. So four times 10 is 40, plus two times six is uh, 52, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to change this to 50, Ooh, not the reaction wheel, change this to 52. And again, I'm going to publish this to make it available to the rest of the team. So you see here that these three values are now publishable. Once that is done, you see now that actually I was at zero, I went to 34, and then the next one is actually 52. And you can imagine that as time progresses, this will go up and down a little bit, and I now have this uh, image that I can track throughout my study to make sure that my um, parameter values stay in check. Of course, I can refresh it, I can uh, hide the chart by double clicking on it, I can open it again, I can copy the data to the clip clipboard so I can use it somewhere else, and I can also save the image so that I can use it uh, in a report or uh, during a presentation, etc. That's how easy it is to track the value of a parameter over time. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.